purposely. Your life, God's purpose. Listen at onpurposely.com. I feel like we're living in times right now with everything going on. We need to be reminded, let's not complicate the gospel. Let's not complicate our faith. Let's just come to Jesus just the way we are and let him work out the rest, period. (laughs) Her name is Jamie Jam Goshen, and she is our featured guest on this week's episode of the Passion Meets Purpose podcast. Jamie loves the Pacific Northwest, and you can often find her along the Kirkland waterfront when she comes to visit. I loved getting a chance to catch up with her. She is just such a thoughtful worship leader. She is a prayer warrior, and she has just got character and integrity for days. She's got a beautiful story, which is the title of one of her latest songs, about how she is celebrating healing after receiving a debilitating battle with uh, Lyme disease, that diagnosis. And she's going to talk about what she went through, ways that she's found healing. She's also going to share about her first full-length album in nearly a decade. So please welcome my guest, Jamie Jam Goshen. Your new song, Beautiful Story, and your whole record, let's talk about it. Tell me about Beautiful Story. Okay, so Beautiful Story, I call the anthem of my heart. It literally, oh, the last few years have had so many highs and so many lows, valleys and mountaintops, trials and struggles and victories. And what I love about God, and I mean, you know this firsthand, is he's always writing our story, but every chapter doesn't necessarily look awesome and glamorous and beautiful. And There are some really hard chapters along the way, but what I love of this life of faith is that we have the promises of God to hold on to, you know? And so we know that he does work all things for our good. We know that what he starts, he completes. So what I love about this new song, Beautiful Story, is I I literally hope it's, it's like a storybook song that takes people on a journey of, you know, wherever you're at, don't stop on that chapter. Don't stop on that page. He's still writing your story. If it's not good yet, hang on. It's about to get good because, you know, in this life of faith with Jesus, we, we have victory in him. So, yeah, so it's just more of an anthem. It's a worship cry. You write a beautiful story from glory to glory. You know, even those in-between seasons, he's still writing something good in our lives. And you have quite a few chapters that give you really the credibility to say all of that because this song was birthed out of a season for you dealing with a chronic illness and praying for healing. Let's talk about that. Yeah. I hit real rock bottom a few years ago with Lyme's disease and I had navigated it, I think fairly well for a long time, but it became neurological and man, it just nearly nearly took me out and it it brought me to a really low place, which, you know, um, never had dealt with such massive anxiety and overwhelming feelings of like, I just cannot function. It was, it was, you know, headache related, brain related. So it just, it made you feel like you can't function and, you know, without purpose, without vision, the Bible's true, we perish. So I just felt like I was so aimless for so long. And, um, I think that the thing that kind of anchored me the most was just holding on to that glimmer of hope. Even when I didn't have it, Jesus is our hope. So as long as I was holding on to him, I could muster up that little mustard seed of faith and say, okay, I'm going to get through another day. But I'm on the other side of it. I went to an incredible clinic in New York, did some crazy, awesome treatments, way out there, holistic stuff. And Man, it it took a while. It's been a journey, but I'm on the other side of that now. And a lot of these songs on the new album are very reflective of that journey. There's like Psalm of David, Low Valley songs, like, God, what are you doing? And then there's those cries of victory and praise. And I really feel like even the whole album is like a story of the last um, few years of my journey of healing. One of the things that you're best known for um, among just other artists that we play on Spirit 105.3 is you are just such a loyal and good friend. And a lot of times in the background of other artists' Instagrams, I'll be like, there's Jamie. There's Jamie again. Like, you're at every baby shower. You're at every wedding shower. Like, you are constantly celebrating the achievements of others. Is that something that you have had in you since childhood? Um... I 
love people big. And I think, yeah, I think I'd love to encourage people. I think that's just very natural part of who I am. Um, and I've always just believed like celebrate well and I want to celebrate others well, and I love that I'm celebrated well. Like, I just feel like it's that whole what you sow, you're going to reap. And some of my dearest friends are in Christian music, and I think just the like-mindedness, and we've just gravitated towards one another. But it hasn't always been easy to show up to another baby shower or another wedding. I'm like, how many, how many bridesmaids dresses do I have now? But it's just that holding on to hope and faith that, you know, maybe that season hasn't happened yet for me, but I, I'm not going to let that steal something that's going on in my friend's life. I'm going to be so excited and celebrate for her and trust that if that's part of the story and part of God's plan for me, which I really believe it is, that it will happen in his way and in his time. So yeah, I do love people and I love food and you know, we go out to dinner a lot. So it's like two things that just kind of go together. <laughs> also, you you have such a very pure heart for leading worship. Like, I can't imagine you doing any music other than this. This yeah. is just what naturally comes out of you. Talk about when that first took shape. You know, I have been thinking about this a lot because I've been doing a lot of interviews for the album and something that came up the other day in one, like even at the young age of nine, 10, I would get behind my piano and just I would just kind of make up these little songs and like what I would call like flow, like just kind of play. And I wasn't a Christian, you know, until I was 21. I got, uh, came to Christ at college my senior year. But I can remember at a young age, I was aware of, I believe it was God's presence and his nearness and his love and his peace. And I think that's something that worship music does, right? It ushers in the presence of God. It ushers in his love, his peace, his joy, his goodness. So even at a young age, I remember feeling that I can remember my mom would walk in and I just have tears streaming down my face at this young age. And she'd be like, are you okay? Are you okay? And I'd be like, do you sense that? Like, you know, I wouldn't have the right words. I wouldn't know the vocabulary, the Christian vocabulary now, but I knew there was a higher power. Now I know it's God that was moving in and through. So my greatest joy, Sarah, is writing songs that hopefully connect people to the heart of God and hopefully make people feel him closer and feel that peace and feel that love and feel that joy. And I pray like hearing you say that, I pray it comes from a pure place because that's like the greatest, um, what should I say, compliment or that would be like the greatest, you know, thing as a worship leader. Doesn't mean my life is perfect or I do everything right all the time, but I do strive to have a heart of worship and a heart that glorifies God, you know, in every way. So thank you. That blessed me. <laughs> I love that you had it before you even knew what the name of it was as a yeah. nine-year-old. Um, I mean, the first songs, if we're being real, were like, why doesn't this boy like me? Like hopeless love songs, right? Right. But, and then I went into jazz music for a little season. And, but yeah, as soon as I came to know the Lord, it was definitely like, I want to sing songs about who he is and his goodness and what he's done. We, I just wrote one yesterday. Look what he's done, you know. <laughs> a similar question in a similar vein about worship music and how it just is inside of you and songwriting. Why do we sing? Ooh, that's so good. And you know what? When I was so sick, Sarah, I couldn't sing. I couldn't get behind my piano. I didn't have the strength or the mental capacity to like stand there and, and worship. And, but I, I think singing is just an outward expression of our worship and our heart and our love for God. But I don't think you have to sing to worship. I learned in that season for me laying on my bed, barely functioning to me, worship was just remembering the faithfulness of God, having a thought of who he was or what he did. That was my song that day. That was my worship. It wasn't getting up, how great is our God? <laughs> you know what I mean? But for me in a healthy state, singing is connecting my heart, connecting my mind, my will, my emotions, the lyrics, proclaiming these truths of who our God is. And, um, you know, to me, that's worship. Now, I also like other genres too, you know, so it's not always, you know, you know, I'm a Beebs fan. So, like, you know, I did I'm not know that. I did not know you were a Beebs fan. <laughs> it's the silliest thing, yes. Um, so, 
you know, if I'm like jamming out to a Bieber song, I don't really consider that worship, but, you know. <laughs> hey, he's come to know the Lord and he's overcome Lyme disease. Maybe we just have all these. You lines. don't have to defend it. There's no <laughs> reason to be defensive. You have plenty of people in your camp. <laughs> The Passion Meets Purpose podcast is made possible thanks to our friends at Northwest University. Ensuring a welcoming spirit for you at Northwest University, your tuition remains lower than all other Christian schools in Washington. And NU is all in on tech. They've got a brand new state-of-the-art technology studio and majors include UX design, data science, video production, audio production, and computer science. This is in addition to an already diverse offering of business, nursing, education, sciences, communication, psychology, music, and humanities. Northwest University is a faith-based community, Christ-centered in all they do. At Northwest University, your future isn't canceled. It's just beginning. What other genres, like, in addition to that, what else? So I do like some pop music. Um, I try to lean towards the cleaner stuff. Um, and I love jazz still. I just appreciate it so much, having studied jazz piano. Um, I love peaceful, quiet, like flowy kind of, um, maybe worship music you wouldn't hear on a Sunday morning at a church service, but more of the just abstract kind of free flowing stuff I find on YouTube or artists that nobody's ever heard of that I'm like, Oh my gosh, this is amazing. You know, um, that kind of gravitates. That's what gravitates my heart a lot. And then as far as the music like that we play on Spirit 105.3, and when you think of your friends and some stuff that they've recently released, is there a song right now that's just sort of like your anthem, like you've texted that person and you've been like, whoa? Oh, gosh, that is such a good question. I, the song that came out that really resonated, and I want to get it right, Oh, Come to the Altar. Is that Elevation music? Yes. Okay, so I don't know them personally, but that bridge... Oh, what a savior. Like, I just, I can remember hearing that in that season I was in and it like shook me. And I was like, no matter what, you know, (laughs) come to the altar, lay it all down again, lay the frustrations, the disappointments, the sickness, lay it all at his feet. And that song really ministered to me in in the last season. Um, Currently, I just heard Francesca's new Christmas album and I... I mean, we're dear friends, but I am obsessed with it. And I love that she took, like, some of my favorites. I grew up singing Rudolph and, you know, just, like, the childhood favorites. And she, of course, made them so cool. Her voice is like butter. But, yeah, so I'm really into that right now. And it's hot in Nashville, so, I like, the more I play Christmas music, the more I'm like, come on, fall, come on, winter. <laughs> I know, because I know you're in Nashville, but I just, I always – you're so you feel at home when you come here to the Pacific Northwest. If anyone's ever looking for Jamie, she's usually on the Kirkland waterfront, having uh-huh. some really good food. <laughs> yes, you know me well. <laughs> or in Winthrop. Yes, I love you know, I love Seattle. I've prayed, I'm like, God, am I supposed to be back there? And I just haven't had that release, but you know I'm like a Seattleite and I'm from Boston though. So I spent a lot of time in Boston this summer as well. People are like, where, where do you live? Boston, Seattle, Nashville. I'm like, can I live in all three places? <laughs> well, before we wrap it up, you know, you've been so gracious to talk about uh, your friends and their music. Let's pick one other song besides A Beautiful Story off of your album. Just whatever one comes to your mind in your heart, share the story behind it. And then the title of your project, where people can find it, how they connect with you on socials. Okay, can I do two? And I'll do them really quick. Of course, I can fit. of course okay. I can. So the album's called All Things, and one of the songs off of it is All Things for My Good. And it really, I feel like, is the cry of seeing God work something so negative for good in my life. And so that song is special. And I, I really pray that that song reaches people that do feel stuck or do feel like they cannot climb out. Um, I remember when I was as sick as I could have been, I pulled up that demo and that was the one that just kind of washed over me. I wrote it with um, Ben Calhoun from Citizen Way and uh, Micah Cooper from Hawk Nelson. So it's so funny because those are like rock bands and it's the most heartfelt worship song, <laughs> you know? But the one that's really, um, it seems to be connecting with people and means a lot to me is called Just The Way You Are. And that's with Danny Gokey, who I know Spirit plays a ton of. And 
I was so honored to be able to do a duet with him, but I wrote that when I got back from the Philippines and was so stirred by some stories of some young women who had been rescued out of human trafficking. And talk about rip your heart out, mama bear, like coming out in every way. Um, that chorus, just if, if you could see the way he looks at you, hear him whisper to your heart, he loves you just the way you are. It just kind of poured out, and it's one of those natural songs that just, da -da 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 -da. and then I got with some co writers later on to spice it up. But that one means a lot because I feel like we're living in times right now with everything going on. We need to be reminded let's not complicate the gospel, let's not complicate our faith. Let's just come to Jesus just the way we are and let him work out the rest, period. <laughs> so that one means a lot to me. And um, just singing with Danny, I just, I feel like it's a really beautiful, almost like a lullaby that I pray people would sense their heavenly father kind of singing over them to bring just heart healing and heart encouragement. And to connect with Jamie, you are pretty good at the gram. I'm trying. I mean, that thing is hard. I don't understand those algorithms, but yes. <laughs> Jamie Jim Gosian spelled J-A-I-M-E, the French way. I'm not French. I don't know why my parents did that. Um, J-A-I-M-E and then Jim Gosian. Good luck. J-A-M-G-O-C-H-I-A-N. <laughs> have, you ever, have you ever wondered if like the spelling of just the, the sheer, you know how like sometimes you can't handle like one more password in your life. You're like, you almost want to complete a transaction, but you just can't get past the new password. I sometimes wonder if someone's trying to find your music to download or whatever. And then they're just like, J-A-M-I, yeah. And I they know. just, they give up. They just give up. No, it's been an issue. It really has been an issue. But I'm like, I can't change my name. That just feels so fake. I know people do it, but that's not me. So push through, push through to find yeah. the real Jamie Jam Gumption. <laughs> Well, okay, so uh, so that's how we connect with you on Instagram to yeah. find your music. We'll link up to it here as well as the lyric video for uh, for beautiful story. And as always, it's a pleasure to talk to you. And yeah, we just we love you. Yes, love you, Sarah. Always so wonderful to catch up with Jamie and she has given you all the ways that you can contact her. Plus we'll link up with the show notes. Our thanks to her. Our thanks to Scott Caro, our wonderful producer and Tara Firma, as well as you for taking the time to listen, to subscribe. Of course, we always appreciate it when you take a few moments to let us know uh, who you'd love to hear as a guest on the Passion Meets Purpose podcast. And we will see you in two weeks.